I'm sitting next to Zimbabwe's top leading female artist, Amara Brown. Hey. <laughs> How are you doing? I'm fantastic. How are you? I'm fine. It's so great to meet you in person. It's great to have you here. Welcome. Thank you. So how does it feel to be at the top of your game in Zimbabwe? It feels like yes, but not yet. I am not at my peak. I haven't reached, I haven't reached the top, in my opinion. I'm pretty much um, on the journey to where I want to be. Where do you want to be? Then? I want to be the biggest female artist in Africa. Period. <laughs> That's great. Yeah, yeah, All well, right. It's going to take a lot, but you know, those are my goals. I, I, I love my territory. I love Zimbabwe. Um, but I've got so many fans across the continent already that are just dying to get me where they are. And it's just a love. It's, it, you know, um, every time I travel to a new country, it's just this level of excitement. It just sort of reignites me, you know, and gives me that flame and that passion all over again. So um, I love my continent and those are my goals for now. <laughs> so you come from a family background of amazing musicians, mm -hmm. your father especially, the late Andy Brown. How do you feel like you're falling in the lineage in terms of being your own unique artist and also carrying on the name of the Brown family? Yeah, um, my dad was very much a world music artist mm -hmm. and um, that was his strong suit and he owned it you know although he had so many different kinds of influences when his sound came out the shape that it always took was different even within the world music spectrum and me uh, you know as this afro pop artist what was important for me was just to be the best version of myself and my father loved that he respected that he treasured that he supported that and um but it was very tricky when he passed away um because zimbabwe expected a female version of this man that they loved and you know he's their legend you know um however i have worked day in and day out to make sure that my music everything about my brand comes across that is true to myself my story is different my father grew up in a village i grew up in the city i'm different i'm a female i'm you know i'm an afro pop artist the mm -hmm. messages that i have to sing about are different or the way that i interpret them are different even if they're the same message and so i've i've tried my best to I always pay tribute. I perform his music ever so often, one or two songs, as opposed to, you know, what people expected. They just expect me to just sort of ride off of that, you know, music and just perform all his music, and that would be the end of it. There's, I, I don't have much respect for that. I think um, I have a voice and I have a sound and I have um, experiences to share that are different to what he brought forth. He was a guitarist. I'm a Mbira player and a vocalist and a dancer. Um, I love, 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 you know, putting in 110% energy on a stage. So we're different kinds of performers. He has his legacy. We have his legacy now to uphold, but I'm also creating my own and adding and contributing to the family name more so than anything else, but with my own shoes to fill and grow, um, as opposed to trying to get into his. You know? That makes sense. Yeah. Tell me about your top song, Achilles. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Achilles. It's from this album, right? This is this yes. is your new CD. Yes, yes, it is. It's Amasha, beautiful. Amasha, Amasha. Thank you, thank you so much. I love the green. Had, uh, it's my favorite color. <laughs> I know, and the green lipstick. Yes, thank you so much. <laughs> I I I was so nervous about this project. I must say, I was um, I had released so many singles. Um, but I'd never, you know, put together a whole body. I once lost an entire album and putting this together was just absolutely just a riveting experience. Mm. Um, but somewhere a couple of months prior to releasing the album, I was in a relationship and, you know, I'm the kind of person who believes that you should not just emotionally and mentally support the person that you love, but yeah. also if you can help financially do that, actually, you know, get into it. And there was, we had a fight and I felt really used. Mm -hmm. And um, I looked around me and I realized that, you know, in African culture and particularly in Zimbabwean culture, I can't speak for every African culture, but in Zimbabwe, 
it's very strange to have a woman in power a woman who is the provider mm -hmm. a woman who is you know i'm very much i'm the matriarch in my family in my mm -hmm. personal life and, and and i conduct that it extends beyond what people see on a stage yes i'm the boss on stage i'm a boss at work but at home i also have a very huge role to play you're the, a, boss. You, uh, well, you're the boss well uh, you know yeah. so, well <laughs> something like that okay you know but uh, you know my my input is very important yeah. but i looked around and all these women were getting into these relationships with these men who were using them for the wrong reasons you know you love a person but you don't particularly understand why the other person is in it because of the economic situation that we're going through a lot of people and not i'm not even going to peg this on men because with the song coming out i found a lot of men were also saying women are also treating us like that we're getting into marriages for financial reasons as opposed to and so um the you know the story of achilles from greek mythology i knew that zimbabweans would just mess up the spelling and a lot of people would be like what is achilles <laughs> you know so i turned the word achilles into achilles with a k and a z at the end and one l simplify <laughs> it simplify it so that it, you know the hashtag is simple hashtag achilles and um it's been amazing it landed up song of the year the video did the most we debuted it on uh, a major uh, station uh, across the continent and it's done fantastic online a lot of people had a lot of um, a lot to say about my depiction of the storyline of what was going on because you know the sexual connotations are a bit <coughs> much for uh -huh. some people but I'm a very sexually liberated woman and and I don't believe that my music should portray anything else um, and I, I love the, the social conversations that have come out of the music video and I'm very glad with the stats. We're going on half a million so I'm super, super proud right now in a space of just over a month. And That's uh, amazing. Yeah, it's done great. I'm grateful. <laughs> That's amazing. So you play the Mbira. Yes. It's your traditional side. Yes. Yes. Uh, I really would love to hear you play something for us. I would love to do that okay. actually. I'm going to be performing a song called Next Lifetime. This is called Ambira. It is a Zimbabwean traditional instrument. And even though I'm a pop artist, I love incorporating this in my music. I recorded this song with the now late, great Yuma Sekela. Um, very dear, dear, not just artist, but person to me. And I'd like to dedicate this performance to him because we recorded this song together and I uh, hope you enjoy it. Great ghost. <laughs> In the 
Thanks again for that gorgeous song. You know, you messed me up. My makeup, I was crying. That was so beautiful. You're so welcome. It, it came from the heart. I actually initially composed that song with my late little sister, um, whom Sekuru Nasekela loved dearly as well. So it's a very sentimental song to me. And I'm glad I could share that with you. Thank you so much. So a few more questions. Yep. Um, you've lived around the world also. Right. Tell me about your time in the United States and what that did for you. Oh man, my mom had just moved there a couple of months prior. She she liked to bounce around a lot, mm -hmm. and um, you know she one of the goals she wanted to live in America for a while, and and so we did. I, I moved there all of eleven years old, and I remember my mom saying to me, "What race are you?" And I said, "I'm colored," and she's like, "No, you're not. You're black here." And let me explain why. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, what? <laughs> yeah, at 11. <laughs> very, yeah, it's very confusing because in Africa, I'm not black. I'm mixed. Um, and they have all sorts of, you know, definitions and terms and, and restraints that we had coming out of, you know, colonization and all that kind of thing post. Mm -hmm. Even now, there's, there's still a lot of social uh, difficulties that we have. Um, if I date somebody black right now it's interracial <laughs> so oh yeah yes it is that would not be the case in the united states exactly exactly i had to learn that i had to understand what is this history she made me binge watch roots um <laughs> color purple name it you know malcolm x i was suddenly uh, you know exposed to all these people this uh, entire culture and history that i hadn't i had no idea about um, and I realized the dynamics when I got home so I'm coming back and I'm just like I'm black and they're like no you're not <laughs> and I'm just like what why because my dad was also mixed as well so it, it helped me as an adult particularly um, I look back now and I was very grateful for the American experience because um, I was exposed to just how different um, cultural um, culturally just uh, how different America is and the world is and how different Africa is and how to integrate and help that understanding cross over um, even now in the process of my music and just how I am my persona the, the understanding that Zimbabweans need to have um, America was a very important integral part of how I view the world and how I even view sexuality um, you know it's very conservative here or they appear to be conservative <laughs> Um, That'll know. be a different interview, you know, so maybe off the record. Yeah. <laughs> this is very different. Um, but yeah, I, I loved America. I loved. I fell in love with hip hop culture even more with R and B. My mother had exposed me, you know, years prior to. So um, I remember being in the um, Martin Luther King Choir and just loving, loving choir as an actual class. Oh my God, that's gold here because that doesn't exist here. Um, America's uh, ability to nurture talent a lot of people say oh you're talented there's so much more that it takes than talent americans are very much about you know going in 110 percent nurturing and i adopted that i i took it with me um and i think it, it was a very important part of how i became as a woman and uh eventually i lived in south africa which is also its own beast um but love 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 Love, love, love living about but zimbabwe is my favorite <laughs> uh, still. all right well we're going to have to wrap it up, yeah. unfortunately. Right. Um, do you have any message you would like to give to all of our listeners in, in Africa, on Music Time in Africa, and followers on Facebook? Oh, my goodness. Um, it is the most amazing time to be African, first and foremost. And I want to say to you that all of you out there are you are the picture you are help formulating the picture of whom african people are and it is so important i'm so grateful for every single one of you who do already support me and my music and those of you who haven't yet please get to know follow me on facebook at amara brown fans a double m a r a three a's two M's and one R. <laughs> we always have to clarify that. Uh, follow me on Twitter, follow me on Instagram, find me on YouTube, and have a great time. And let's grow together, let's pull together, let's redefine what an African person is. Want them to know. Love. <laughs> Amara Brown, 
Music Time in Africa yeah. with me, Heather Maxwell, yeah. on The Voice of America. Thank you so much. <laughs> Thank you so much. This is great.